55 part 3 of Kenya's premier sports video podcast, the Three Quarters Podcast. Now the Road to Japan draws closer every day um, as and the Kenya Simbas are currently uh, in the preliminary stages of the World Cup qualifiers. Rally behind them, jump onto the hashtag Road to Japan. Let's keep at it, let's not stop, they really need our support. As you know, they are the superstars of Ken- uh, rugby in Kenya. I'm Dimino Duffield. This is Gashi, official noisemaker. I'm Jerry Goose, Kenyana. All right, now in part three, as you know, we uh, move on to other sports. So we'll start off with athletics. Um, now, uh, what do you think uh, happens when things like politics uh, in terms of squad selection <laughs> <laughs> start at camp even before you get to the World Championships? Man, we've see, we saw this in rugby. <laughs> and you could see where, what happened. What happened, we, we ended up not qualifying for the uh, Rugby World Cup back in 2015 because of interference in the squad selection. Now that this is happening, we're hearing in the news that a guy who has, who, like Michael Saruni, uh, 800 meters, he was part of the squad that even qualified in the third best time uh, during the qualifying, the, the qualifying rounds, is being axed from the squad without any explanation. And he had to hear this on <laughs> the news, <laughs> not even called, not courtesy, to just tell him, hey, yo. You didn't make it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's really sad and it messes, it messes the team at large because it's some chemistry if, you, if you're in the teammate and you know that this is the guy i'm going to work with you have some strategies that have already been set in place uh, the, the, the world championships are about to start in a few days why do this now the <laughs> yeah, true, true. <laughs> it's i mean um and just to Ngusa's last point the world championships are starting on the fourth of august kenya are the defending world champions in the world championships <coughs> You still haven't selected your squad? Come on, man. I mean, it, it, it's a joke. And um, athletics, a- athletics Kenya, sorry, unfortunately, is one of these uh, institutions or the government bodies in Kenya that has been dogged uh, with politics over the years. Yeah. Athletics Kenya and uh, Kenya Football Federation, FKF nowadays. Those are the two institutions that have been dogged with politics mm-hmm. in Kenya. And we are seeing what's happening. To be honest, uh, if we actually have a good performance in London, it's going to be purely up to the boys, yeah. or the team rather, yeah. in general. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's going to be boys. not the boys. It's going to be up to the team in general. Uh, but it's it's just not right that you have in politics and the squad has not been selected uh, with a few days to the World Championships. Well, best of the uh, best of luck to everyone who is selected. Yeah. Uh, whether it's fair or not fair, we still want <laughs> you know Kenya to do well. Yeah, we did. <laughs> now, uh, moving on to uh, NBA. Um, where there's been a couple of trades, um, what what trades are? What would you say um, are the highlights in terms of which ones are to note? I think the one that stands out is uh, Derrick Rose moving to Cleveland Cavaliers, yeah, joining the team up now with uh, LeBron, yeah. uh, James and uh, Kyrie. Well, not not that bad, but that guy's <laughs> his injuries <laughs> just too many. <laughs> can only hope that uh, yeah he can up the game. As a backup uh, point guard, not bad, not bad, not about that. Uh, not bad. I mean, there's nothing this guy did in New York. There's nothing Derrick Rose did in New York. Uh, 2008 uh, first draft pick, 2011 uh, NBA MVP, league MVP. Uh, but of course, the injuries have really uh, messed his career. Uh, he's moving to Cleveland. Does he do anything to Cleveland? I don't think he's going to add anything to Cleveland, uh, to be honest. But yo, it's already been done. Uh, the shocking thing is that he's, <laughs> he's only being paid $2 million. <laughs> for one year. For us, <laughs> but we just have to wait and see uh, when the league starts happening, how that trade is going to work out for Cleveland. All right, now on to Formula One. We had the Hungarian Grand Prix uh, last Sunday. Um, take us through that, guys. Yeah. Uh, Hungarian Grand Prix. Uh, Number one, okay, let me just give you the log. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, how, who finished where? Uh, Sebastian Vettel won it, uh, followed by his teammate Kimi Raikkonen came, coming in second, then Valtteri Bottas, the first Mercedes coming in third. Uh, leaving uh, Sebastian Vettel still on top, now 11 points off. Uh, uh, Hamilton 11 points off him. You, you are, you t- we were talking earlier and you were telling me about um, the discussion that was happening in Mercedes yeah. between um, uh, Valtteri Bottas and, and Hamilton. Yeah. What, what exactly was it? Yeah. Uh, Bottas was actually lead, it was ahead of Hamilton. Yeah. But Hamilton was really quite, driving quite fast. He was having a good race. Yeah. So the team instructions were to let, uh, ha- Bottas to let Hamilton pass yeah. and try and catch up to uh, keep the record yeah. and see if he can overtake him. Yeah. Uh, in 10 laps though, yeah. we're still to do it in 10 laps. <laughs> It'll give you the time frame. If in 10 laps you haven't, yeah. then let Bottas uh, overtake you and take the third spot. That's what it's, a, it's a good team spirit if I may say so. Yeah. Yeah. If uh, they can have that, 
Uh, it shows some chemistry. But then, it uh, wouldn't have happened with Nico. Like that's what I was going to say. <laughs> that's <laughs> what I was going to say. Happened. And, uh, when you listen to the mics, uh, yeah. when they, when they uh, play the sounds, when I think a lot of cussing that goes on <laughs> <laughs> in between the two, among, yeah. amongst the two, the the, two of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yes. I mean, That's I was going to see. say, I was just, I, it, it, remi- it reminded me of the bust up between Nico Rosberg and uh, Lois Hamilton a, a few seasons back. That's why I just wanted to talk <laughs> about what is happening. All right, now back to uh, NBA for our bonus topic. Um, and the question is Is it possible for two main stars to play on the same team, um, like in the case of Kyrie and LeBron? Wow. <laughs> it is possible. <laughs> I believe it is possible. But it boils down to the chemistry that happens between the two of them, if you can have some good rapport between the two of them, let's say uh, recently when Kevin Durant moved to uh, Golden City Warriors, you knew that Curry, uh, Stephen Curry is the, is a franchise player, mm-hmm. if I may say so. But he took a step back to allow KD to, uh, to be the show up mm-hmm. there. And what did it happen? What, what did all happen for them? They won the championship. Uh, the championship. So I think it is very possible. It's a matter of getting it right amongst two, the two players, and then all will be all. I mean, they've been tandems have been there, duos have been there, trios have been there ever since. You can think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen, um, John Stockton, Karl Malone. Yeah. Uh, you had uh, Shaq and Kobe, which, by the way, ended badly. <laughs> um, can they play? Yes, I think they can coexist, but it's always about ego. Um, one player has to realize that, okay, fine, there's the franchise player. In this case, franchise player is LeBron James. And Kyrie Ivan has to be willing to step back and let LeBron James, okay, be the franchise player. But, I mean, Kyrie Ivan is a better clutch shooter than LeBron is. So there are days that the team is going to need Kyrie to actually, actually, most days. The reason why they won last year's championship to me is because Kyrie Ivan played ball, for lack of a better word. This year is because he didn't show up. So I think they can exist. But in this case, uh, of course, there's an issue when Kyrie Ivan was drafted by Cleveland Cavaliers. He had been told he was going to be a franchise player. What happens two years later? LeBron James comes back from Miami Heat and he becomes a franchise player. I mean, it's LeBron James, so at the end of the day, he's going to be a franchise player. I think um, Kyrie, it's, it's, sometimes it's good to shelve your ego and think about the greater picture. I think they're a very good tandem. I think in the last six, seven years, there hasn't been a better tandem than these guys, but it's but it might break up because of what's happening, and uh, I just think that uh, Kyrie Irving should sit down and shelve his ego and support LeBron James, uh, but also there's a question about time. I mean, he's 25, 26 years old, so he wants to be a superstar. Uh, so we just have to wait and see how that pans out. But tandems do exist. Yep. Uh, I think Kyrie Irving should be taken from the, should be looking at the Shaquille O'Neal, almost said Shaquille Bryant. Shaquille, <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant situation. <laughs> Kobe Bryant has been vocal and said that he wishes that they stayed together with Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. They would have won more championships. His ego came into, into play and we know how that ended. So I think uh, Kyrie Irving should be thinking about that. They say Kyrie Irving and uh, Kobe Bryant are very close. Yeah. And maybe he's maybe the one who's be. triggering it. I don't <laughs> think so. But he should be thinking about look, just take a step back, let the guy be the franchise player and win more championships. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt he's a great player. Um, sometimes you just have to play Robin, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> now um you've mentioned a couple of few of uh, a few good duos or rather great duos. Yeah. Um, who would you say um, goes are your greatest duos in the twenty first century in NBA? <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one, man. <laughs> but uh I'll borrow Okay, from the Nash's list, he's uh, mentioned a few guys. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal and uh, Kobe Bryant, that was a, that was a really good uh, duo. Three championships. Uh, uh, I mentioned Paul Pierce and uh, Kevin Garnett as well. Yeah. That was a very good uh, combination. Uh, I'd also want to see how the St- Stephen Curry and uh, Kevin Durant, how that would work out. So the jury's still out for that one. I like the Splash Brothers. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, Clay Thompson and uh, Stephen Curry, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I must mention Tony Parker and Tim Duncan. <laughs> Those guys were really quite good yeah. as far as. Yeah. But Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant will win this one for me. These guys, they everyone. But, <laughs> but uh, I'm just thinking of, I liked this one. There's one duo he's mentioned that I didn't think he was going to mention that I really like. Tony Parker and Tim Duncan. 
I think those guys were a good tandem. Uh, LeBron James and Dwayne Wade in the Miami Heat days. Yeah. But those ones, that one was the more of a trio with Chris Bosch. Yeah. Uh, I would say Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett because you also had to add, add Ray Allen into Ray that Allen mix. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant, that was the most, like, in the beginning of uh, the 21st century. They were the champions in 2000, 2001, 2002. Got to the finals in 2004 only to lose to the Detroit Pistons. Yeah. So I think uh, Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant were the most dominant tandem uh, in the 21st century. Uh, however, I think in terms of tandems, the best tandems were before the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the old school guys. The, the um, old school guys. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to ask you. I mean, those are you, those uh, combinations we've seen. Yeah. I'd like to ask you to just give me one each um, yeah. of a combination you'd like to see. <laughs> you have asked or not? I had a question. <laughs> <laughs> Who I'd like to see currently in the game? Um, let me tell you, I really loved, and unfortunately, I don't think it's it's going to happen. I really loved the Kevin Durant Russell Westbrook tandem. Unfortunately, now Kevin Durant has moved to Golden State Warriors. Uh, just to echo what Goose had said, I'd, I'd like to see how uh, how they play at Golden State and see if they're going to win more championships. What about you? Can I just come up with one? <laughs> like <laughs> a fantasy. One. Yeah, just one. Fine, a fantasy. A one. fantasy one. I'd like to see LeBron playing with uh, Stephen Curry. Okay. Wow! <laughs> I love to see that. That's super fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> that is super fantasy. Buddy. I really like to see that. Yeah. All right, guys. We'd like to thank our fans and followers for taking their time to watch our episode. Um, you can also follow us on Instagram, like our page on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Demima Duffield. This is Nyashi, official noisemaker. I am Jerry Guskenyana. We're taking a break next week for the elections, but see you week after next for episode 36. Watch out when I'm in the election. That's what guys have been saying.